All right, so here is what we are going to create today. Today we are going to create a bunch of enemies that can be knocked down with a baseball bat. And when they are knocked down, they become a ragdoll. This tutorial is a lot harder than the other ones I've done so far, so please be aware there will be quite some coding involved and it will take a lot of time overall. So be aware of that and otherwise just enjoy. So I expect you to have the third person controller set up and a enemy following you around. We will not cover these topics in this tutorial. If you still need to figure them out, please see my other tutorials. I link them in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. So next up, we will go to the asset store and choose a weapon for our character. I'm going to choose a baseball bat, but you may choose whatever weapon you like. Once the weapon is downloaded, go to your assets folder and select a prefab of your weapon that you like. Drag it into the scene and from here what you want to do is you want to go ahead and align the weapon to the hand of the character where it's supposed to be later on in the game. As I already showed how to do this in a different tutorial, I'm going to speed this process up a little bit. Once you have it aligned very good, you want to go ahead and select the hand or whatever part of the body you want to attach it to from the tree on the left side. Um, here you, I will choose the hand and once you have found the hand, you go ahead and drag the baseball bat or your weapon right onto that hand. Once that is done, you can hit play and you will see that the weapon now moves with the hand of the character. After we have the weapon attached, we are now going to add an animation to the character, which makes him swing his baseball bat. So go over to the asset store and download a package of animations. Um, I'm going to download the melee X pack just because I like the animations in there, but you can download whatever you want. Now before I start testing my scene, I will disable the AI from the enemy just that he doesn't get in the way all the time by walking towards us while I'm testing things. Then I'm going to head over to the animator window of our character. Here we are going to drag out the any state a little bit to make it a better view. Then we are gonna hit right click and create new state. I'm gonna call that state attack and after that is done I want to add an animation to it. So I'm gonna go down to my animation package and choose an animation I like. In my case this will be an attack called horizontal swing but you can choose whatever you like. Once you have found one go back to the animator window and there you can either drag it in or search for it and then the animation is applied to the state. Next up we will want to add a transition from any state to our attacking state. So make a right click, add transition and pull it to our attack state. But we don't want um, the attack state just to trigger randomly, we only want it to trigger when the player attacks. So go to the left side, create a new trigger called attack and then go to the conditions on the transition and set attack as a trigger for the condition. Next up we actually want to trigger our animation so go to our character and here you want to add a new script which is called weapon enabler so go ahead and create that script. Inside of that script you want to go to the update function and here you want to add if input mouse button get mouse button down um, which pretty much means that whenever the mouse button is pressed you want to trigger that function and then you want to use your animator to set the trigger that we just created so go m animator and then set trigger. Uh, you will also want to declare the animator at the top just so it finds it and then you should be good to go.
So the animation works now. Um, the only thing you need to do now is set a new transition. So after the animation is done, the character actually transforms back to its normal state. So go ahead and create that. Just right click, create transition and you are done. Now that we have the animation working, we actually want our enemy to be able to interact with it. So what we want to do is we want to add a box collider on our weapon so it can collide with the enemy. So go ahead and add a box collider and then click on transform and transform the box collider so it fits the weapon. So once you transformed it and you hit play, what you will see is that the box collider now kind of is a little bit annoying because it interacts with the floor and it interacts with the character itself. So it looks very disgusting. Um, so what we want to do is we want to disable the box collider and we only want to enable it once the attack is done. And we are going to do this by using our enabler weapon script. So go back to that script. And we're going to add two functions. One is called enable weapon and the other one is called disable weapon. We then will also need to create a weapon game object. So up top, create a new public variable which is called mWeapon. You can now drag your weapon onto your script and that way the script knows which weapon to disable or enable. Then inside the enable function what you want to do is you want to get the collider, collider from the weapon and activate it once that function is executed. And after that you just do the exact opposite in the disable function. Now we need a place to fire our enable and disable function. To do that we are going to use animation events. So click on the animation that you selected and then right here where the inspector is you want to go and choose the animations tab. If you don't have that tab go to the right corner, click it, click add tab and then click animation. Now you should see a window with a bunch of keyframes in there. Um, so before we looked at the animation and we determined that we want our weapon to be enabled around frame 24. So we're going to go to frame 24 and then click right here to add an animation event. And then when you want to disable it, which was frame 34, we're going to click right here and create another event. Now you can click the, those little markers up here. Then go to the inspector and there you enter the function name you want to be and triggered if we at hit that play moment after this, time. What we so can see is there, that if it, we get too close to the enemy, enter the function it name, pushes away from it and, we and that's that because both the box collider is activated and therefore their unity function. does its physics magic. So this is exactly what we want and from here on we can determine what should happen once the enemy is hit. In order to make the enemy react, we are going to select the enemy and go to the AA char character controller script. So go there and click edit script. In here we are going to create a on collision enter function, which is a standard function in Unity. Inside of that function we are going to say if the collision game object, so the object it collided with, has the tag name bat, which we are going to add to the bat in a second. So when that happens I want the target, which is the player in this case, to be null. So once the bat hits the enemy should just stop and stand at its place. We're just going to do this because we want to see if it works. So. Let's hit it, enter target null and let's go back to our scene and click on the bat and over here choose a tag. Um, you can create a new tag if you like. 
and yeah just use that tag in our case it's bad now we also want to add a rigid body to our weapon and that way it just works and we set the kinematic to true on this one and after you have added the rigid body it should just work so click on play and see what happens so as you can see the enemy is following us now we hit him and he stops following us so everything works as expected now we can move on to the next step so we want the enemy to become a ragdoll once it is hit by the bat so what we have to do is we create a new ragdoll for it um, i have another tutorial where i cover it in detail so if you want to check that out i'm going to speed up the process here basically you click the enemy right click and select create ragdoll and from there you just move in all the body parts and have the program create the rectal for you. So if you want to check that out in detail, please check my other tutorial. I'm going to speed this up for a second. So once you have it created, go ahead and disable the collider, the rigid body and whatever from the enemy character on top. So it does not become in conflict with the new ragdoll. Then hit play just to see if your ragdoll works. This might not work on the first try. Ragdolls are quite work intensive, so be sure to adjust yours the way you need it to. So we here see the knight is falling down, so the ragdoll works fine. And with that, we can move on to the next step. So now comes the hard part, and this will be a lot of code that you have to write. So if you ever don't get along or the video is going too fast, just feel free to pause it. So what we need to do is we need to disable the ragdolls on start. So we need to create an array for all of those ragdolls. So what we're going to do is we create a new private array, which is called colliders. So go up here and create it. And we will also need an array of rigid bodies. So rigid bodies and colliders of the rectals. So go ahead and create another private array here. In order to get all the rigid bodies and colliders from the rectals, we're gonna use the function get components in children. Um, we're gonna call that at start. So once the character is initialized, we are going to get all of those colliders and rigid bodies. We then are going to iterate over both the rigid bodies and the colliders and disable them and make them kinematic. So in that way they are all disabled by default. We're going to use a for each function for that. So just iterate over those arrays. We will also uh, use a private collider and a private rigid body for the character itself, which is already under. But uh, with our for each loops, um, the top collider and the top rigid body from the character itself is also disabled, and that's not really what we want. So we are going to create extra variables for this and enable them again once the loops are done. We're also going to use the same procedure for collide as for collider and for rigid body for the animator. So we create a new private animator, um, which is going to reference the animator that's on the enemy, and we want it to be disabled once the enemy is hit by the bat. So once that is done, you can see that the enemy is back to normal, as if there was no ragdoll applied to it ever, uh, which is exactly what we want. Um, so we are going to add in the activating of the rectal once the enemy gets hit by the bat. So let's head down to our onCollision function. I'm going to add a lot of code in there. I'm not going to comment on everything, but what's basically happening, we are doing the exact opposite that we didn't start. So we are disabling the collider and the rigid body of the character and enabling its rectal components. So basically it's saying, all right, now you are a rectal. So please behave like one.
I am also going to use a vector, so which is basically a vector which points in the direction in which the bat is swung. So every time the enemy is hit, it actually um, kind of flies in the direction that the bat is coming from. Well, in the opposite direction, that's what I meant. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So once you add that vector, you can add a force to all of those rigid bodies of the rectal. And after that, we pretty much already have what we were aiming to do. So just keep adding a lot of enemies and yeah, have a lot of fun. If you like the tutorial, please consider subscribing or giving me a like. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I cannot answer every question, but I try my best. So see you next time.